<clears throat> Hello and welcome back to uh, Apple Producer News. I'm your host, Luke Catwalker, and today we are going to uh, be doing uh, an interview with Pongo. Pongo is the writer and director of of the Equestrian Civil War II, The Battle for Philistines. And today's topic will be Osalis' character development. And basically, the writer and director is going to explain Osalis' gradual character progression without, uh, uh, I mean, throughout the story. This is uh, a 34 view special, which means our fan fiction reading, narrated by Pongo, has hit about uh, uh, 34 views. And to celebrate that, for you, for you 34 viewers that watch the fanfiction, we are going to do, uh, or more like Pongo, is going to do a breakdown on the Salsa's character development, step by step, and phase by phase. Okay, let's go. <laughs> hello, hello, people of the internet. I am Pongo, writer and director of, of uh, the Equestrian Civil War II, The Battle for Silverstream. Now, on the topic of Lothalus' character, it's kind of hard to, kind of hard to write. I mean, when she was doing the filming, when she was doing the filming with us, and score selection with Randy, we wanted to make sure we got her character right. Lothalus was with us, she was helping us get the Kingston uh, bits out. I asked her, in certain situations, what she would do in each scenario. But that's not really a topic. We're talking in story here. Okay. So, uh, let's pull up the fan fiction and begin. Now, now, in the beginning of the story, we see, uh, Ocellus, uh, practically, uh, acts as a mother to Silverstream, who at this point, uh, has, uh, been freed from slavery, the war is over, and she's at the school. The school is out for the summer. Ocellus practices uh, empathy with Silverstream, but uh, some of you may think that, oh, her character hasn't really changed, but it has, actually. Her character has. So, throughout this, I actually... Uh, I actually uh, had to work hard in writing this dialogue here. Uh, it was hard to uh, characterize Silverstream mainly. I mean, uh, she was even harder to do uh, than uh, Osalus. I mean, I wanted to give her some depth, Silverstream some depth, while having her character pick off from the from, pick off from the original. Oh, being scared and stuff. I wanted to give her some depth. But on the topic of Ocellus, Ocellus is there. Ocellus was there for Silverstream the entire semester. She was even there when uh, Silverstream was recaptured by the Empire. Ocellus got captured along with her. Now, you, we haven't uploaded the original one yet. And truth be told, I haven't even made it. I mean... Actually, I did. But it was a long while back. And when we had to do a total data reset on the iPad, that fanfiction was basically gone. Basically, I wanted to write the sequel first, because, uh, the first draft, first draft of it, I really, really remember the first draft of it. It was really cool. Second draft is even better. This dialogue here, uh, <laughs> that was fun. So, I'm not being the mom, I, like, <laughs> Osalis and I got a good laugh over that. I mean, she even said to me, that is something my brother would say. Yeah, skip over uh, over a few things. So, uh, we see Ocellus, uh, he, uh protects Silverstream. She protects her. Yeah, and that is what uh, good friends should do. Like here, Ocellus defends Silverstream from the whole class bullying. Bullying her. Now, if you uh, look closely look closely at this passage, the the whole class laughs because Silverstream can't figure out a problem. Now, a math problem. Now, it's not 
really her fault, according to this, because she grew up grew up as a slave, and slaves were raised illiterate. So uh, Osalis wastes no time in calling calling the class out for this. Read the passage here. Osalis couldn't bear to see her friend suffering like that. She flew up from her seat and shouted, "How dare you! All of you!" Everyone stopped laughing and looked at her. You all should be ashamed, Osalis yelled. You were all imperial citizens once before Princess Luna split up and formed this republic. Any one of you could have been slaves. You guys think you have it all good and you take for granted the fact that you could have been suffering under Celestia right now like she did. She pointed to Silverstream, who was wiping her tears. And, and Mrs. Sapphire, I expected you to empathize the most with her, but you did nothing to stop their laughing. How can you expect to be first senator one day if you can't even practice empathy? Now, uh, the empathy theme for this, we got from To Kill a Mockingbird. We even stated that that was a heavy inspiration. Uh, it was the right, it was the right literary text to go off of. We read, we read some of the themes over several times, read a few passages, and we decided to include that theme, theme in there while not ripping off Harper Lee. We did not want to rip off to kill a mockingbird with this, but we added the un but we added the underlying themes in there, such as empathy and uh, racism uh, or speciesism in this case. More of that comes during the trial. And uh, and uh, here, Principal Moonbeam echoes what Osala says here. I'm sure Osala has told you all, Principal Moonbeam said, that your classmate. Silverstream comes from a terrible upbringing. She has spent eight years as a slave to the Solar Empire. Just think, that could have happened to any of you if Princess Luna hadn't saved us from Celestia's wrath by seceding. You all take freedom for granted when you are all very lucky to have it. As I said, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. If you are not, well, you, you can just leave the Republic and experience Silverstream's plight for yourselves. Ocellus noticed that the other students now look very forgetful and ashamed. Principal Moonbeam went up to Miss Sapphire and said, Something like this must never happen again. I expect you to discipline him next time. Got it? Miss Sapphire nodded. Finally, Principal Moonbeam went up, went up to Osalis and said, You did the right thing by telling me. Now aren't you glad you went with me to my office? When Osalis nodded in agreement, Principal Moonbeam left the room saying, Ciao. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Oh, I loved writing that. So, analysis on that. <laughs> Othellus hasn't yet learned to learn to practice uh, empathy with everyone. Everyone yet, though she certainly already has the has the compassion and kindness towards uh, towards Silverstein. Now, uh, now uh, basically. Uh, what we're gonna what we're gonna read later, right? Gallus and uh, Gallus and Smolder, two others of comprising of the young six, are juvenile delinquents, and Ocellus frequently calls them out for ditching classmate times. However, as we'll see, as we'll see, while their characters don't progress at all, they're stagnant characters, and for good reason. We wanted to take the focus off of them more more on Ocellus. So, Gallus and Smolder were intentionally stagnant characters. Which is why I had a hard time writing their motivation when Osalis tries to empathize with them. But, I found a good... I found a good reason. So, uh, yeah. Osalis' character here is in its beginning. Is in her beginning stage. She, uh, already knows how to practice empathy with Silverstream. However, she has not yet learned to practice it on a universal basis, and this is something Atticus will teach her. And there will be no party revelations. The second stage doesn't come until... I pulls a John Proctor. Did I mention that Crucible was also a minor inspiration? It's broken. I got a dream. I got a dream. Hold, hold on. Changes. Okay. Here's where 
uh, here here is where the second second stage un unfolds. Oh, Ocellus knows that Silverstream is in trouble, and she uh, takes it upon herself to help. This is stage two of her character. I mean, she gathers she gathers the courage to try and do something, even if it is on a government wide basis, and. Uh, the conclusion of phase two will be uh, stated stated at the end of uh, end of this of this chapter here. I really loved putting uh, writing writing the reunion. I think I think if you look at the context of the original, which I haven't written yet, it uh, it was a long time. It's been a long time coming. The oh, Silverstein's real family was definitely very happy to see her. This is where phase two, phase two concludes, where Ocellus finally takes take, takes the courage to uh, say to say I know um, I know I'm not a professional lawyer, but I'm taking the, taking the case anyway. She's my friend. This was one of the this is one of the big decisions. <laughs> That Ocellus makes in the fanfiction. It's one of the big decisions. It's not something to be taken lightly. I mean, I mean, it says it it says here that is possible. Although we have no one to represent Silverstream in court because all other lawyers are busy doing their cases, so we have no. I will be her lawyer. Ocellus cut in, causing everyone to say what? Now I'm sure all of you reading that part. Along, along with me, were also like, what? <laughs> you probably think I was going off in fantasy land there when I wrote that. Uh, kids, don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. It won't work. Literally. But I wanted to add some uh, growth to Ocellus' character, so I thought, I thought, okay, she's, okay, she's gonna become a high school age lawyer. Yeah. And I had to find some way to build on that yeah, later on in the story. Alright. Now, uh, the concept was already established in the first draft, which had to be deleted because of a data a data reset. Uh, the difference between this and the original draft was that the original draft had Ocellus team up with some of, with some of her friends. And it's not Citrine at this point. Right, but... Some her, but her friends uh, like Autumn Blaze and uh, Herbal Remedy from another My Little Pony fanfiction stuff. They uh, they took uh, they are uh, they took the case together. This one, Ocellus takes the case alone, and I believe this was a better decision. I was going to uh, I was when I was writing this, I was going to uh, rehash. The original draft, but I decided it would add more depth to to Ocellus's character if she was to take the case alone, go through all this stuff alone. I mean, uh, yes, yes, the dream spark plays a point, you know, plays a part in part in her character development. But if you think about it, a lot of this Ocellus had to do on her own, and this adds to her depth as a character. Uh, Amber Sky, another, another good character. This is where she meets, uh, she meets, she meets Citrine. Now, uh, phase three of her, phase three of her character will come, will, will come soon. Now, Ocellus, uh, doesn't really, you know, doesn't really like Citrine and her friends at this point, because they're basically the stereotypical gossipy yeah, teenager group and stuff. I mean, I'm think I was trying to think of typical high school age high school age girl interactions in in writing this. I mean, yes. Uh, I mean, I mean, yes. The girl and her girl and her friends are talking are talking about a crush. Really like really like her. Talk about social media and that sort of thing. That took inspiration from from uh, general teen conversations. And. And Atticus Spark, I ripped right out of To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> I 
ripped, I ripped this, I, I ripped this character right out of To Kill a Mockingbird and bonafide him. Now, uh, <laughs> now, don't worry, not a carbon copy. I mean, he definitely doesn't have, uh, doesn't have a gem and scout. He has, uh, one daughter, Citrine, that's it. I had to add some key differences, so, uh, you all wouldn't think, oh, no, you're copying. I literally ripped the character out, but I don't care. <laughs> okay, so phase three of our character unfolds here. You'll notice as I scroll down how it changes. Starting with Othellus took, took that advice to heart. Look, um, look carefully. Actually, uh, start from here for the next few weeks. You scroll down, you see the lessons. And the quote ripped right out of To Kill a Mockingbird, right here. Starting with, starting with, you never really understand. And then I kind of reworded it, but the idea is basically the same. Amen. She was able, like, she was able to amend past grudges. She hung out with uh, Sir Jean Park, Patty Peppermint, and Barry Bliss more. And uh, she doesn't quite find them as annoying. One time she. One time she found Gallus and Samoa ditching class up to their usual troublemaker antics. This is where, uh... This is where she learns to empathize with Gallus and Smolder, finally. And I think I actually added a Phase 4 in there, in the midst of Phase 3. I mean, you could say I'm a rookie character development writer, but to me, there's never going to be another fanfiction like this. And, uh, here is the motivation I wrote. Uh, uh, as, as I said, this was kind of hard to write, as I had to take the focus off Gallus and Smolder. So, I had to find some sort of motivation. You can judge, you can feel free to judge me on what I did here. Yeah. As a result, she learned a lot about why Gallus and Smolder ditched class. Turns out, they were just creatures bored in class who just wanted to have a little mischief in their lives. And what better way to do that than causing a ruckus at school? Oh. Eh, what do you think of the motivation? Eh? Eh? Oh, what do I think of it? Well, I had to write something. Yeah, usual rumors here, and, uh, Rainbow Harmony was actually uh, a, mi a minor uh, background character. And the Mile and Pony Friendship is Magic episode, uh, season 8 episode, uh, School Race. Uh, she was just there for a cameo, actually written by uh, a little girl. Well, OC, I, I was actually surprised by that. Hasbro accepting a fan OC. I guess Derpy was a fan OC as well, but that's kind of off topic. Yes, this goes all the way to 2021. So, if you think about it critically, guys... The Silverstream Hawk Trial doesn't really start until next year. So if you think about it in the world world of Equestria, Silverstream is still a slave to Cozaglo by this point in time. The case doesn't unfold until 2021. You, you hear that? That's the, the that's the weird thing. And, uh, you could say that up there was what Phase 4 is, but, uh, actually, now that I think about it, I think Phase 4 of Ocellus' character development really unfolds here. Where Ocellus comforts, com comforts the train after she failed a math test. And this is where she really, really learns to practice empathy. The conversation right here is, uh, starts from right here. What's wrong? Now, I'm not going to read it. You scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. I'll scroll as slow as possible.
Oh, the suspense is intense. Quack. Thanks, thanks, Mittens. You're welcome for the comedic sound effect. Again, you're welcome. So, uh, Atticus sold his daughter here, but Osala sticks up for him. It sticks up for versus the train, and Atticus is proud of Osalis for learning that, for paying attention to his lessons. This is where, where he finishes. Uh, he finishes, her training, Osalis's training. This is the, the this is a real a real master is proud of student moment. It is where. Uh, uh, Osalis enters uh, into uh, one of the finishing parts of her character development. I mean, not the finishing, but uh, uh, right here. Yeah. Wait, finish? I thought I needed a whole year. It's only been about five months. Atticus smiled. I honestly have nothing more to teach you. This is just review. The key to being a great lawyer is dealing in facts, and most importantly... Practicing empathy. And over the course of these five months, with all the sweeping changes you brought at your school because you applied the concepts of empathy, you have not only shown you understand it, but you can apply it, in, apply it in an effective manner that better society. I couldn't have been more proud as a mentor. Congratulations, Citrine Sparks said quietly, although no one saw her nor heard her as she was hiding behind a table, silently eavesdropping on the conversation. I saw this girl, tears of happiness come to her eyes as she hugged her. And I'm proud to have been your student. The hug lasted for about 30 seconds before they let go of each other. How, how wonderful. As I said, there's not going to be another fanfiction like this. Put my heart and soul into this. And, uh, been a long time in the making. And, uh... No, 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 no. Because history is the story told by the winners of the fight. You apply little lie, little testify, and try little tailor. We're gonna trust the vessels on the middle of the night. No, no. Oh no, I got that kind of Monte Cristo song stuck in my head again. Uh, that's catchy. Insert, insert Mulan music into this scene. She's practicing here. And she knows that uh, if she doesn't win this, all is lost. The pressure is on, the pressure is on her, but she is willing to do it. Because, uh, if any of you have read To Kill a Mockingbird, you'd, uh, You'd see how important the Tom Robinson case was important to Atticus. And same here. Freeing Silverstream and clearing Hawk's name was, uh, was just as important, if not more, important to uh, Ocellus than ever. Because she knows that her friend's, that her friend's life is at risk. And, and it's a lot of pressure. But she is willing to do it. That is why she trained for those five months. We see Thorax in this scene. I didn't really have much trouble writing him. He was just he was just there. Okay. And took major inspiration from the Tom Robinson trial for this. However, with a major twist. Whereas in the Tom Robinson trial, the lawyer lost. In this one... They won. Archives. Archives. This is where the suspense builds up. And uh, both, both Citrine and Ocellus get really worried. And, uh, and uh, Citrine practically saves the day with the power of social media. Now, Ocellus is the main hero here, but she... Uh, but even though she did a lot of things on her own, I mentioned that Citrine has a part in it. Basically, she's uh, there for uh, there for Osala's moral, moral support throughout the trial, and to present evidence. Like she found the she found the two documents that Hawk ripped up, 
and glued, and glued them back together. There. I have no idea how she was able to do that. I mean, I mean, you're like, oh, you're the, oh, you're the author. You should know, right? Well, honestly, I don't know personally. I mean, if I was to uh, just be walking and then spot a bunch of ripped up documents, how would I be able to glue it together almost seamlessly? Hawk literally ripped the document up into shreds, if you remember. And how in the world? Was Citrine able to glue them all back together? That's it. That that's something me as an op, as an author will never figure out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, I ripped out another quote from *To Kill a Mockingbird*. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Harper Lee decided to file a copyright lawsuit against the channel. Don't get any ideas, YouTube. And she wins! I actually put different music when I actually did that, so the, all the two tracks kind of mixed in. So, uh, all, all together, Ocel has had, uh, four, if not five stages to her character development. Now, where's, now, where is number, n n where is number five? It, it comes, um, about, uh, about here, where Ocelus has to make a hidden decision. A hidden decision. And like, uh, Silverstream, uh, forgives Cozy Glow for what she did. And Osalis, mm, and Osalis does, uh, mm, and, and Osalis empathizes with, Co with Cozy Glow, but she has to make the decision to not be on Silverstream's side for once. And that's the phase five of her character development. She supports Silverstream all the way through, but she has to make the decision to not be on Silverstream's side in this one. Now, this is definitely a tough choice, even though it doesn't seem like it. It was a tough choice for her. She says, uh, because of my lessons with Atticus, I can you know, sympathize with Cosgo's motivation to better her life, but my pity does not extend so far as to forgive her for what she did to you. <laughs> that was the hard decision. That she had to make. And the no trademarking, no regrets was a Lego movie to the second part reference. This fanfiction is full of references. And this is teasing the sequel. After all, you didn't think this was the end of the story, did you? <laughs> so. Okay. Those were, uh. Those are all, all five stages of Osalis' character to character development broken down in detail. It shows, it really shows her growth as a character, where at the, at the age of, uh, where from, from the ages of 13, 14, 15, 16, she has to go through all, all this. To save her friend. So, yes. It's uh, it was it was a difficult journey for her, and uh, she made it. Next fan fiction up will be the search for Princess Twilight Sparkle. Now the release date of that one is unknown at the moment, but I will get back to you on that. Next up will be uh, Citrine Sparks character development. Now. Uh, that is going to be a hard topic to discuss because if you think about it there will really if you think of, if you, if you think about it it's kind of hard to point out where the where the dreams character kind of uh, you know, kind of grows but I'll point it out to you in the next in the next behind the behind the text episode 
Okay. Uh, okay, back to Luke. Mm -mm. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Pongo. Okay, that was Osal's character development in the Equestrian Civil War II, the Battle for Silver Stream, explained in detail. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you in the next... Uh, I'll see you in the next, next episode. Now, on to sports. Okay, so in the recent uh, buckball match played between the two uh, schools, uh, the School of Magic and...